Hi everyone, this is Angie here. Today we are at one of the must go to tasting annually for anyone in the wine professional tray. This is Union of the Grand Cru Bordeaux tasting where all the big Bordeaux houses come by and showcase uh, kind of not so much on premiere because this is already bottled and ready to be shipped. So it's usually two years behind. So right now it's 2020 and we'll be tasting mostly the 2017 vintage. Uh, 2017 is not quite as highly regarded as the 15, 16, or the 18. It's a little more of a difficult year, reminiscing more of the 11, 12, and 13 vintage, slightly cooler year. This is the kind of tasting I love to be in because you get to really see which producer can thrive in a year that is less than perfect. And we'll see which of the village does the best. So go with me, let's check it out. Check out the entire room. to taste all of them and then go back and point out some of the top producers of 2017 vintage and share them with you so hopefully it will help you on your buying journey for the 2017 Bordeaux. So I've just finished tasting the left bank starting from the top on Saint Estef, uh, Puglia, St. Julian and then by Margot. Um, as long as you are close by the river, the frost didn't hit and they kept all their crops. Uh, overall, the body of the wine is a little bit lighter and the, um, the Pouliacs are doing pretty well. They just, ha they just drink more like the 2011 vintage. It's a little fresher, it's higher acidity, it's a little redder fruit, but overall the quality is still there. It's not disastrous by any means. Um, however, I really do enjoy the wines from St. Julian because usually St. Julian to me is uh, a region that's a little more what we call small but powerful, usually a little more rustic, a little more manly. But this year, however, all the St. Julian have tasted are quite elegant and aromatic. It reminds me a lot of the Margot wine, a lot of beautiful florals. Margot to me this year is a little um, usually I'm such a huge fan for the Margot region. Unfortunately, this year I felt like uh, with the frost and the cooler temperature overall, their wine just taste and feel a little bit leaner and thinner. Uh, some of the wine have very great aromatic, it's very elegant on the nose, but on the palate it's lacking. And some of the wine is just not quite there or they have almost um, a juicy, fruity, almost a little gamay like characteristic to them or some some of them are a little bit green so it's kind of too bad however i will recommend a couple of margot property that really stood out we are going to go back and interview and show you some of my favorite producers from each one of the region so patreon contest the lalon is definitely one of the standoff of today they consistently are able to produce wine that goes above and beyond the quality, even a difficult year. So that's pretty impressive. Lynch Bosch, feel like for the 17, where a uh, year is considered less than ideal, has a tremendous amount of structure and tenon and a good balance of fruits. Definitely one of my top recommendations from Pouliac if you're looking for a good wine from the 17 vintage. Uh, Beautiful vintage. Um, we really love the 17. It's been a bit overshadowed by the 15 and the 16, which were great vintages. Uh, the 17 shows the great freshness, uh, beautiful uh, fruit. Uh, we are comparing it a little bit to the 2001, that was also overshadowed by the 2000, but that is shining today. So we're very happy with the vintage. We were spared by the frost that uh, uh, year, and uh, we love it. So Chateau du Milan 17, uh, it's a blend of 76% Cabernet Sauvignon, 24% Merlot, and 17 is a very nice approachable vintage uh, with a very aromatic nose, a very soft tannins, a very delicate, elegant, well balanced. So a wine which is uh, still very nice to drink today.
Uh, Chateau Duhar Milan, as you can tell by their label, that they are related to Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, and they share all the uh, winemaking team, um, technical team, and um, I think because of that, they have one of the best, uh, fullest body, the most structure all of the so-called um, less than ideal 2017 year. Highly recommend giving them a try. Leoville, Leoville Barton, so it's a second classified growth in Saint Julien. For the blend, uh, quite special. We have a lot of Cabernet in the blend this year. It's 88% Cabernet Sauvignon and the rest Merlot. So easy, easy blend. <laughs> um, yeah, 17. I think we're all quite happy with this vintage, especially on the, in Saint Julien because we didn't have any frost. So that's a, a good thing. It helps and. Um, yeah, happy to find also this 17 between two big vintages, 16 and 18, because I think it's going to be a vintage that we'll be able to drink earlier. Uh, yeah, earlier than the big ones, so I think that's cool. I don't think we do much difference. I think uh, we're just lucky with the nature. Uh, nice souls. Saint Julien Appellation is a tiny appellation, it's 900 hectares, so and very homogeneous in the soil. So. That's why I think, yeah, just luck with good terroir and, and good nature. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Another highly re recommended from Saint Julien is the Chateau Leoville Pauvert. Fresh Val is another one that show very interesting as um, I have a particular fondness of the Bretagne Maisy and Fresh is one of the winery that actually shows a little hint of that earthy, bready notes and I find very attractive. So Siran is a blend, it's 46% um, Merlot, 45% Cabernet and 9% Petit Verdot. So typically it's we're trying to have a balance between the Cabernet and the Merlot and then we have the Petit Verdot uh, which adds the personality of the wine. Uh, we do 12 months in new oak barrel. We try to be very soft on the oak. Uh, we feel that the um, the wood, we don't want the wood to overpower the fruit, so we're trying to keep the fruitiness of the wine. Uh, Petit Verdot was, I mean, quite present. We, we like the Petit Verdot in Siron, and we always have, uh, we can go up to 13% Petit Verdot. It has happened in the past, but we try to keep it around 10%. We, we try to, and we really work on the balance between the Cabernet and the Merlot. Now we got very lucky. Uh, we were spared by the frost. We had the hail and rain, <laughs> so 17 was, was a complex year. We had to do a lot of work, uh, green harvest and sorting on the tables to really keep the best. Yes. We didn't include uh, the Cabernet Franc this year because um, the, the weather didn't allow them to, uh, to mature properly. So like I said, a lot of sorting and big selection, but we're happy with the result. I actually talked to a couple other sommeliers as well. So not just myself, there's a couple other sommeliers pointing out that the Chateau Saron is kind of a stand of a 27 vintage in the Margot portion. Um, I thought it showed really well, so highly recommend, especially at a lesser vintage, quote unquote, you usually get a better deal and better pricing. So I would definitely recommend uh, stocking up on this wine in particular. Hey, how's it going everyone? For today we are tasting the Chateau d'Esmiral. Um, this is 35% Cabernet Sauvignon, 55% Merlot and 10% uh, Petit Verdot. It's uh, 12 months of barreling in French oak. We also hold on to our barrels for about two years. Uh, with the 2017 vintage, we also had a lot of our Cabernet Sauvignon plots affected by the frost. Therefore, we had to put a little more Merlot. It adds really well to our bouquet of aromas, a very nice balance of acidity and tannins. And uh, ready to drink now and probably another few years and it'll just get better and better. This is the 2017 Chateau d'Esmeral. It's another one I think really stands out. It, again, it's the second Margot property that add a good amount of Petit Bordeaux. I think that really worked out well in the 2017 vintage. And this is, I think, one of the best wine from the Margot region for this particular vintage. So next, we're going to go to try wines from the Rye Bank and Almadac and a couple of the dessert wines. All right, so we're done with kind of the Omadoc and Passa Leon and all the right bank at this point. Uh, there's a couple of uh, winery that stand out in saint Omion. We're going to go back and to interview them. Bonjour, je vous présente le Château de Tancaré 2017, que l'on retrouve ici à dégustation à San Francisco. Alors, nous sommes sur un joli millésime, hein, avec une belle, euh, un joli fruit, euh, un bel équilibre, un beau Bordeaux classique. Nous avons un assemblage composé à 60% de Merlot, 35% de Cabernet Sauvignon, 3% de Cabernet Franc et 2% de Petit Verdot. 
So in my opinion, the 2017 Chateau Latour Carnet was one of the most elegant yet well-balanced wine. It's very pleasant to drink right now, and I think it doesn't show any greenness. It actually has a good combination of red and black fruit, so it's very attractive for 2017 and also highly recommended. Chateau and Cantemoral has long been one of my favorite, I think, as far as for the value that you get and the price that you pay for. They generally average for about $50 US retail, but I feel like they've always overproduced uh, for kind of the price point, including the 2017 vintage. Um, and this vintage, they actually are one of the only chateaux that show that very beautiful black inky pencil lead um, aromatic in the wine that I just did not find any other wine and that's very, very attractive. And on the on the palette, the fruit is a little more red, but overall bright, lively, balanced, juicy, and very pleasurable. I guess who I ran into, this is Walford Wen from Wine.com. Previous Walford Wong. Walford Wong, sorry, not Wayne Wong. No like, problem. I'm, I'm Taiwanese. It's I, okay. Wong is a Hong Kong thing, I feel like. It works. Like. It right, works. right, it works. It's easy. It's he okay. is a legend in the wine industry, so I had to ask him what were his favorites so far, and I'm really glad that we're pretty much on par. And everything Walford told me that I didn't put it on my top five, I'm definitely going to go back and taste them, because <laughs> this guy is the OG of like wine taster. Oh my God. Yeah. The, the nice wines here. It's an interesting vintage. It's, um, mm. Elegance is really important here. Yes. This is a vintage of elegance. That's what we're looking for is balance and elegance. Do you feel like any of the village stood out or is like individual uh, wineries? I think the individual wineries. Yeah, I follow the same uh, way too. This I year. think there's a handful of really good wines with a lot of pretty. Thank you. A lot of pretty good wines. Yes, I agree too. I think this is one of those like insider's vintage. If you are following the person who knows what they're doing, for example, if you follow Walford's opinion, then you'll find really good wines at like really decent pricing compared yeah. to 15, 16, and 18 oh, that's about to come yeah, out, right? for sure. It's so good to run into him. Pleasure. Bye. Yeah, bye. Hello, I'm Ronan Laborde from uh, Chateau Clinet. I'm the owner and general manager for 18 years now. Chateau Clinet is a very ancient uh, winery located on the right bank of Bordeaux in the tiny appellation called Pomerol. So Pomerol sits on a very nice territory, on a very nice terroir, where the geology is composed with a high proportion of clay and iron dust. So what is clay? Clay is a, is a soil which can be very hard when it's uh, sunny, dry for weeks, and can be very, very muddy when it's rainy, and we call that soil the lovely soil because it sticks to your shoes. We grow Merlot. This is a spiritual kingdom for Merlot grape varieties there. The Merlot has been discovered in Pomerol in 1783, more than 200 years ago. Chateau Clinet 2017, which is very delicate, soft, juicy, easy drinking, mm, and will age quite fast. So five to seven years after the vintage, after the year of production, I would uh, strongly invite you to drink and share this beautiful wine with your wife, girlfriend and best friend. Thank you very not, much. Not wife and girlfriend at the same time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Chateau Clinet is probably my favorite from the Pomerol in the 2017. I thought the, the fruit and the juice extremely polished, really easy drinking, really bright, overall very balanced. There's no harsh tannin, greenness, or whatever have you in the back end. Very easy drinking, and again, just like Roland said, it will be great in the next five to seven years. Hello, nice to meet you. This is Chateau Valandro, vintage 2017. Um, a small property located uh, uh, in saint emilion of course, it's a first growth. Um, mostly Merlot, of course, 90% Merlot, 7% Cabernet Franc, and 3% Cabernet Sauvignon, um, with very low yield, so tiny production. Uh, this vintage in particular, it's uh, 30,000 bottles, uh, aged in new oak, 100% new oak for 22 months. Uh, we have no secrets. We are hard workers, you know. <laughs> there is no secrets. No. So yeah, definitely one of the best in Omeon I've tasted from the 17 vintage. They do use quite a bit amount of new French oak. It shows up a little bit, but not too um, obtrusive. I find a very interesting winery. Uh, this winery does something a little bit different where they uh, actually add more calf front and then treat it almost like a Pinot Noir, if that makes sense, very delicately. So their wine is not your typical Bordeaux, but it stands out from the crowd. Okay, the most proportion in the blend is Cabernet Franc. You have 55% of calf franc, 
the rest is 25% of Cabernet Sauvignon and 20 of Merlot. And during alcoholic fermentation, I use half part of the crops with all cluster. You know, it's to increase the freshness in the wine and also the, to increase the well balance between alcohol and acidity. Because the level of alcohol is 13.5, but the pH of this wine is 3.5. So it's very low pH, you know. And um, I use uh, almost 100% of New York, you know, but a very, very long aging because it's more than two years. And after, I blend it again and I put in the, during five to six months in the concrete vats, you know, for, to finish. Because I want to increase the drinkability in the wine, you know, and the fineness and to increase the silkiness of, of the tannin. Because for me, the new wine making in Bordeaux is to increase uh, two things the drinkability first, and secondly, you can drink early other one, but in the same time, you can keep it a long time, yeah, the aging. And uh, with the well balance, it's very important. All right, guys, that was it. That was the 2017 Bordeaux tasting. Obviously, they were missing some of the iconic, legendary first growth there, but still give us a really good, I think, overall feel for the vintage. My conclusion is that this is a vintage that is very individualized. And talking to the different producers and different villages, there's not, you can't really generalize in a certain region. Um, what do I mean by that? For example, in the 14s, all the Margot showed up really well, but here in the 17s, Kings, um, it is really you really do have to pick every single village had a a few stand out producer but I couldn't generalize say hey one village did better than the other so I hope you enjoy today's uh, live tasting walkthrough and learn a little bit more about 17 vintage and hopefully that gets away a, lot, a little bit of a fear uh, from what the critics are saying about this vintage I think there's still a lot of great wines at really good value don't be afraid well Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And I also invite you to go on my website, www.angsum.com and subscribe to my mailing list. So you see all the updates and I also offer a lot of really cool wine deals. So thank you so much. Cheers, drink responsibly and enjoyably.